this is Dr. Mark Barkey, Professor of Aerospace Engineering and Mechanics at the University of Alabama. I am going to use this video to kind of give an overview and course introduction for AEM 250 Mechanics and Materials for distant students. I'm currently in the student preview mode as you see up here. Your screen uh, will not have that, but this allows me to show the display as you will see it in the course. Now, the first question you might have would be how to get into the Blackboard course that you see here. So as a student at the university, you should have access to something called MyBama. And there's probably a student tab over here. I have a faculty tab. And if you click over here, it says Visit Blackboard Learn, then you should see your Blackboard courses. So if I click on that, I get to see the courses that I'm teaching. Uh, when I click on courses and you can do favorites and so forth uh, but these are the ones that I'm teaching in the uh, current semester or the upcoming semester and I have favorited them and I click on this link and it'll take me into the page I have it already brought up so I'm not going to click on that particular link at this moment so that's how you get in to see your your course now I want to go through the left hand panel and show everybody how to get to different um, functionalities in the course, different areas to look at the homework, submit homework, and watch the course um, materials and videos. Now if you do not see this left hand panel right now, it may be collapsed. If I go down here, see this kind of popped up, you may have it initially look like this and uh, you don't see that left panel. But if we click on that, then it'll expand that out. There's different things over here. The first section is primarily for uh, your use. You can see if there's any alerts, um, your grades, the tool panel for students, and it says course videos. Let's click on that. And let's see where that takes us. I might have to um, change that. Well, it takes us to the uh, Panopto content, which is fine. And I'll show that here in just a minute. So if we go to the course homepage, this will always take you back to this original uh, section here. <clears throat> now I've taken various pictures throughout the years of different things I found very interesting, and you'll see some of these in the class. This particular picture here is from the Renaissance Center in Detroit, Michigan, and showing the, the concrete columns that help support that very tall building. It's a very interesting building if you get a chance to take a look at that. Uh, a picture of that from the outside. It's it's uh, it's very neat, very interesting, and and all these concrete columns are in compression. And as we go through the class, we'll learn about compression and stresses, and buckling, and all these kind of interesting things uh, that we have about uh, mechanics of materials. So I'm going to use this video for both the fall 22 and spring 23 semesters. So your announcements may be slightly different if you're looking in the spring 23 semester, but you'll see here. Uh, an announcement welcome to the class and it shows what to do start here I have a welcome video and a course schedule that we'll take a look at the course schedule has our due dates for our class read the class syllabus for the course policies and then the course content is divided into modules which are accessible on the uh, course begin the course by visiting the introduction module all right well let's go back up here let's take a look at the syllabus then the course schedule and we'll go through kind of an order here for the class if you're not familiar with mechanics of materials mechanics of materials is a, what's called an aerospace engineering and mechanics class it's in the AEM department but it's really not aerospace engineering it's mechanics mechanics is the fundamental physics or classical physics behavior of objects statics dynamics mechanics and materials and fluid mechanics make up the four fundamental courses that most engineering students in civil engineering aerospace engineering and mechanical engineering take mechanics is the study of how objects respond to forces and loads so those things are, are very fundamental now in addition to undergraduate classes in mechanics there are graduate classes in mechanics that deal with the stress analysis fracture mechanics cracks different materials advanced mechanics and materials, theory of permanent deformation or plasticity, and all sorts of other interesting topics. So uh, let's go and click on the syllabus. 
This will take us to the university syllabus website. Again, this is for fall 2022. This should look very similar for spring 23. It has the prerequisite information, so Math 126 uh, or 146 is Calculus 2, and AEM 21 is Statics. You need to have a C- minus or better in those classes in order to be taking AEM 250 Mechanics and Materials. It's a three credit hour class, and um, we're going to cover concepts of stress and strain analysis of stresses and deformation in bodies loaded by axial, torsional, and bending loads, combined loads, statically indeterminate, indeterminate thermal stresses, columns, thin walled pressure vessels, and so forth. There is a required text. It comes either as an ebook through what's called Access Granted Red Shelf through the University Soup Store, or you can get a hard copy of the fourth edition of. Uh, Roy Craig and Eric Telleff's Mechanics of Materials. And those are the various ISBN numbers. You will need one of those too. Now we don't have any online homework codes or anything like that that you might need for other classes. We just use the homework problems out of the textbook in addition to the reading material for the book. Other course materials, I do have some information on the website. Uh, all of it's been transferred over to the Blackboard shell. And um, in addition to the Blackboard shell, I use something called Panopto, which is integrated into the Blackboard shell. I'll show you in a minute. And I also do some things on YouTube. So I plan to make sure that this video is also on YouTube in case you don't know how to get into your course to see the, the Panopto videos yet. This will be able to uh, get you to the right places. And again, our textbook information. There will be, um, you'll be charged for the ebook for the class unless you specifically opt out of the ebook. The nice thing about the ebook is, well, it's an electronic format that can be more convenient sometimes if you're on the road and have a laptop. Um, some people like to use hard copy though, and I understand that. I like my hard copy books as well. You can opt out of the ebook, and I'll show you instructions on how to opt out if you do not want it. If you do not opt out within a certain introductory period of time in the course, then you will be charged for it. Now, the ebook is a lot less expensive than the hard copy. We're talking maybe $50, $60 as opposed to a couple hundred dollars for the uh, hardback. So, we have various course objectives and learning outcomes. There's different modules to the course introduction, stress, strain, and design, axial deformation, torsion equilibrium and stresses and beams, deflection of beams, stress and strain transformation, thin wall pressure vessels and combined loading, buckling of columns, and design topics. Each of these have various outcomes associated with them, and you can use these as kind of a checklist when you study for your exam. Uh, do you understand how to calculate axial normal stress and strain in a bar? If you don't, then this is a clue. You need to be able to do that. So go back and study some more, watch the lectures, ask questions, participate in the discussion board for the class, and so forth. And so for each of these different modules, there's an overview and a list of objectives. Now, I'm not going to read through all of them right now, but I will leave that to you to look over as you uh, read through the syllabus on your own. <clears throat> now, the syllabus at the University of Alabama is kind of like an agreement between the student and the instructor. And part of that agreement is how many exams and when they're going to be approximately and so forth, uh, how much each exam is worth towards your final course grade and, and so forth. So uh, there's basically homework, three regular exams during the semester, and a final exam for the course that will comprise your uh, composite score for the entire semester. Based on that composite score, you'll be assigned a grade of anywhere from A plus, uh, A, A minus, and so forth, uh, whatever you earn based on the breakdown of your points in this class. So homework um, will be due. You'll need to write that on a piece of paper and scan it. I suppose there's probably ways to use um, an iPad to do the writing and so forth these days, uh, but you'll have to turn that in as a PDF document. I do want to stress the importance of academic integrity in this class. 
copying homework solutions from other students, copying homework solutions from other sources such as uh, a, uh, an, an example problem or solution manual that you might find or from some website, something like Chegg comes to mind. These things are not appropriate for AEM 250. In those cases where that is detected and documented, uh, you will be turned into the academic misconduct monitor and the appropriate actions will be taken, which could include um, suspension or expulsion from the program. And I do want to emphasize that uh, not only for the homework, but on the exams as well. And every semester I end up with one or two students that uh, out of a group of 30 or 40 in my distant section that think that they won't be uh, found out, uh, but, but they are and, and the appropriate actions are taken in those cases. I know there's a homework zero, we'll take a look at that. Homework zero is a required assignment and it's basically an acknowledgement of the course policies for this semester. Uh, that needs to be turned in, it needs to be turned in very near the beginning of the semester. And it's just designed to make sure that you understand and indicate that you understand how the course will be conducted. And uh, we'll go through homework zero here in just a little bit. Now there are recommended problems. We'll talk about these in more detail later. Recommended problems are not turned in, but you really need to work the recommended problems in order to be proficient with the course material. They are essential for understanding the content. The required homework problems, that's just a sampling of the homework. The recommended problems are the ones where you'll actually do most of your learning on how to work problems in this class. And the reason why working problems is important, that will be the basis of your exam score. Um, you know, it's not a multiple choice type test that you're going to have. You're going to have worked out problems with a pen or pencil and a piece of paper that you will work out problems and get to a particular solution and indicate a final answer. Now there's three regular exams during the semester. They're 90 minutes each. Final exam is two hours long. All exams are comprehensive to the date on which they are given and they are closed book and closed note exams. For the distance education students, exams need to be proctored. That means you will travel to a location to visit a live proctor and take your exam. For AEM 250, I do not allow webcam proctoring. Okay, so keep that in mind as you take this class. There will be a time where you need to make an appointment somewhere outside of your house to go visit a proctor. We'll talk about exam dates here pretty soon. There will be an exam window uh, which you have to be able to take your exam and uh, you'll need to locate your own in-person proctor through something called Smarter Proctoring and the College of Continuing Studies will give more information on these exams as they come up and how to sign up for uh, a proctor. Now that said there are certain things that could come up where you are at that may affect you locally that, that I'm not aware of so you know who knows uh, it could be something like an earthquake somewhere or maybe uh, local pandemic conditions or flooding or other severe weather or something. If that comes up, then uh, we can talk about our other options. Okay, We may have to delay the exam or we may have to do some other arrangement. Um, but you'll need to contact me and talk about that as soon as you're able to. Final exam is going to be held during the university scheduled final exam week and the exact date is to be determined. We'll be able to look that up on the academic calendar. If you have a question about how the, your um, problems were graded, you have seven days after the exam return. So I'll grade your exam, give it back to you. You have, you have seven days after that to appeal any grading decisions for that particular exam. All right, so exam procedures. You'll go to a proctoring location. Cell phones, smartwatches, any other communication devices are not allowed in the examination room. Wireless functions on calculators must be disabled. Stored files and equations must be purged from calculators at the start of the exam. Caps and, uh, with brims must be removed or placed backwards during exams. Again, academic integrity is very important during these tests. I want you to write only on the front side of each page, only on one side of each page, even scrap paper, and that is to aid 
in the scanning of your work so that nothing's missed when you turn in your exam and your uh, proctor scans it and uploads it and sends it to me. I do want to point out that there are only two allowed calculators for this course, the Casio FX260 or the Texas Instruments TI30X2S. These are very inexpensive calculators on the order of 10 to $25 and you can find these in various uh, places. There are reasons why we need to have these kind of calculators and um, uh, you can ask me questions in the discussion board if you want to find out more information. For AEM 250 there is a prohibition on the use of so-called tutoring sites. Things like Chegg.com are strictly prohibited. There's no reason to use Chegg.com. I'm going to show you that I've worked out uh, more than a hundred example problems for you to look at. You can ask me questions at any time. I will help work through or make a new uh, solution video or example video for a problem that you might have trouble with. Uh, Chegg.com is just too um, it's too convenient to um, be able to use that to be able to use on exams and I've seen that quite a lot in the last several years. Uh, there's, there's no reason to use Chegg.com for anything and particularly if you upload an exam problem that is uh, against the rules and against the academic uh, conduct rules. Okay, so if you need help, find me. Copyrighted content. You've seen the, the photographs that I've taken, the materials I've developed. Those are not to be uploaded to other websites. Uh, these are my own content and they cannot be distributed, photographed, stored, or uploaded to other locations except to send me uh, your test so associated with this class or the homework. Some expectations from prerequisites for AEM 250. AEM 201, which is a class in statics, you need to be able to draw a proper free body diagram. A free body diagram is a simple sketch of the structure that is freed from its supports that shows the loads and reactions applied to a body. Supports must not be drawn on the free body diagram but are instead replaced with the idealized reactions that the supports impart to the structure. Free body diagrams and statics are really, really important in AEM 250. Almost every single problem that you will work in this class will first start off like it's a statics problem. And an entire class in statics in AEM 250 is where you really learn statics. So we're going to have um, uh, some review of statics and, and we'll talk about that as we work through the example problems. AEM 250 also has Calculus 2 as a prerequisite. You'll be expected to have uh, knowledge of being able to find basic derivatives, integrals, and functions of one variable. And there are some additional topics in mathematics that aren't part of the prerequisites, and I'll teach you as we come along to these particular topics, but they're going to be things like integration of functions of two variables, finding the volume under a surface, basic uh, sinusoidal solution of a second order ordinary differential equation. Now if you've had calculus 3 and or differential equations this should look very familiar. If you have not had it don't sweat it it's going to be alright. I'm going to teach you what you need to know and, and it might even be something where if you have uh, what we come upon in my class that'll give you some context later on in your classes in calculus 3 and differential equations that might make that class make more sense and relevant. So, so it'll be good. We'll, we'll work through that. You're not going to be responsible on an exam for knowing those topics. We just need to cover just a little bit so that we can explain how some equations work and how the materials behave. Our grading policy for the course. The course consists of the homework, the regular exams, and the final exam. 5%, 60%, and 35% are the weights on all of those. And I will say that although the homework is listed as 5%, that's kind of uh, kind of hidden in there. If you don't do any of the homework, you're not going to do well on any of the tests. So that's going to count against you far more than 5%. Okay, so we do have these scheduled exams and the final examination that will be very similar to the homework. So work those recommended problems in addition to the required homework in order to uh, understand 
the material. Attendance at class meetings is expected. What that means for distance students is I do expect you to keep up with the pace of the class and watch the appropriate videos as the semester progresses. You will get some attendance quiz credit. And what I mean by attendance quiz credit for the distance students is it's based on a percentage of the, the homework that you've turned in. So we have 10 homework problems, 10 homework sets, rather. If you turn in all 10, you're going to get 10 bonus exam points that will go into this category on scheduled regular exams. If you work 9, you'll get 9 bonus points. If you don't turn in any of the homework, you're not going to get any homework bonus points. Um, so that's what will happen at the end of the semester. Um, the midterm grade for the class is based only on your exam one score. Uh, what they call the midterm grade is due before you're going to take your exam two. And so I'll only have the information on exam one. Because there's not very much homework turned in by then and because it's kind of a course measure of your progress in the class, your score for the exam one will be your midterm grade score but without any plus or minus. Okay, so it's important to keep that in mind. You can always compute your score at any time based on the weights shown previously or you can ask me how you're doing in the class and I'd be happy to let you know. Now the grade ranges for the class are standard undergraduate grade ranges. We have uh, 97, 98, 99, 100% in the class get you an A+. And you can see the other grade ranges here uh, that we have. Missed assignments, missed assessments. Don't uh, wait to the last minute to submit your work. Get it submitted. Make sure it's submitted by the due dates listed in Blackboard. Uh, if you miss those dates, it may result in a grade of zero. You can contact me if you need to go out of town, you have a trip coming up, and you're not able to get it submitted, or your internet is down that day. Let me know, um, and we can work with you uh, to make sure that uh, the information is submitted uh, as close to on time as possible. You may be required to produce documentation, so if you tell me that you are in the hospital or have a doctor's appointment, then I might ask for a doctor's note that says that you were seen uh, in that particular instance. Now, I want everybody to try really hard to take the exams during the exam window that they're open. If you miss a regular exam during the semester, then I have an option of either giving you a makeup exam or waiting the final exam for the missed amount. So for example, if you miss exam one, what I can do is I can say, well, exam two and exam three are going to be worth 20% each, and the final exam is going to be worth 55% of your course grade. I don't recommend missing those exams. Um, and I want to emphasize that it's up to me whether or not there's going to be a makeup. And, and it sound, might sound kind of harsh, but there are certain times in the semester, like at the very end of the semester, there's no time really to give a makeup. So that would be difficult for me to provide that option. So I encourage everybody to take all of the exams at the uh, particular time when they're offered. The dates will be known well in advance. Make your preparations now. If you need to take a day off work or schedule somebody to cover you, then you'll know exactly when uh, now at the beginning of the semester when those dates are going to be. Notification of changes, required software. If we want to meet, uh, I may use Zoom or something called Blackboard Collaborate or other video chat software. And uh, you know, you'll need a PC or, or whatever in order to access those particular programs and applications. Technical support is provided by uh, the College of Continuing Studies, and there is some information there. Uh, we have various system requirements. Um, minimum student technical skills, capstone creed, statement on academic misconduct, disability accommodations, severe weather protocol, uh, and again I mentioned about possible flooding or earthquakes or whatever. If you were on campus we'd all know when there's severe weather coming towards campus we're alerted. If you're off campus and, and maybe in another state 
I may not know that you may have severe weather in your area. Just keep me posted and you know if you miss an exam because of severe weather we will figure it out and we will take the uh, appropriate protocols to um, make sure that you stay safe and that you get your work done uh, when you can. There's pregnant student accommodations, religious observances, the UA Act statement, the wellness resources, and so forth that are all in the syllabus. It's kind of a, um, a lengthy document, but again, it kind of covers all the bases. And in a way, it's kind of like a contract between me, the instructor, and you, the student, as to how the class is going to be conducted. All right, so that took a little bit, but that was the syllabus. Let's take a look at the course schedule. So I'm going to click on this. You can also click here, and it should pull up the same file. Oop, I need to edit that link, apparently. Let's see if I can get this one to work. OK, now this one worked, so I need to, to edit that link over there. But what that did is it downloaded a file. Now it may pop up for you or it may go in your downloads area for your browser. Uh, either way, you'll need to uh, open this up as a PDF document. And this course schedule basically tells us what we're going to do for every day in the class. Now, when I teach this to on-campus students, I usually teach this as a Monday, Wednesday, Friday format. And so these are all the lectures uh, and the topics for a Monday, Wednesday, Friday arrangement. And I would really recommend that you kind of keep up with that schedule as you take this class. Now you may uh, have the flexibility, you do have the flexibility to have a class, uh, uh, watch a couple videos in one day and do a bunch of homework on the weekend and, and so forth. Uh, but I do recommend very much keeping up with the progress of the class because the exams are going to come up at a certain time and they're not going to wait. Uh, they're going to be exams with hard dates, uh, with a window to take the exams. So let's take a look at what the first thing says. So this is for fall 22. You should have something very similar if this is the spring 23 semester, but we have the date. Our first day of class is on, is on August 17th. It's a Wednesday. Assignment 1. You will read this section in the book, these sections in this case, and the topics are the course introduction and normal stress. The fourth edition recommended problems are here. And then there's a video that you will watch that's associated with this topic. You'll watch the video or videos, work these homework problems, ask questions if you have any, any problems with anything, and then continue on to the next lecture. So again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you know, there's holidays in here and so forth. But these are the various topics. We'll see that each of these days or assignments has a lecture number associated with them and that should match up either exactly or pretty close to the assignment number that's in this course schedule. We will have exams. We have uh, three exams during the semester. I call those regular exams. So this is a day where you can use for questions and answers and you can do your prep for the exam. So this is a Wednesday and then the exam window is going to be the very next Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you're going to have a three-day exam window for each of these exams that we have. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom of this document, the first exam, exam one, it's 90 minutes long, and it's going to cover chapters one and two. All right, and the idea here is that you're going to probably start on some additional material before you uh, that won't be covered on exam number one but that allows you additional time to ask questions to get your homework back from the grader to take a look at it and so forth we have an exam uh, two right here and then an exam three we have our Thanksgiving break and then a little bit of final material and then our final exam so uh, these are the dates, these are the Wednesdays that are the prep days, and then the following Thursday, here it is, Friday and Saturday after this Wednesday will be when you'll have 
those exams. And the same will be true of the final exam as well. The final exam is in final exam week. That'll be the week after this this week. It's called study week. And you can find that from the academic calendar for the university. All exams are comprehensive onto the date that they are given. You know, comprehensive one through two, three through six, seven through nine, and then course comprehensive. So seven through nine, this exam three won't cover buckling of pinnated columns and so forth. But these topics that you see after exam three material, chapters 10 and 12, will be on your final exam. All right, there's another page to this. And on the second page are the required homework problems, their point value, and the dates upon which they are due. And again, this is for the fall 22 semester. You should see something very similar for this for spring 23. Um, and we'll take a look at a couple of these homework assignments here. And, and I want to put this, and I want to try to make this as clear as possible. The required homework that you turn in to be graded, if you only do that, you, that may give you the 5% homework credit, but that is not sufficient for understanding the course material. You really need to work all of those recommended problems to get a full understanding of the course material. Now, there's a lot of problems. There's probably more than 100. But I have worked almost every one of these problems out as example solution videos. And if there's not a video for your problem and you want to see it worked out, send me an email or post on our discussion board what that problem number is, and I will make a new video for you and the next students that come along. Okay, so I'm happy to do that. Uh, so again, there's no reason to use any kind of tutoring service for this class. I am uh, an expert in this topic, and I am more than happy to help you understand the material and work problems for you so that uh, that can help you see the correct solution approach to these particular problems. All right, so I think that's enough on the course schedule. We have just a little bit more that we want to cover through here. Uh, the next step, uh, stop on this list is the Panopto videos. It'll take us to the same place as course videos. And this is where all of these homework problems that I've worked out are at. Now the, the home page here will show this video. I'm making this video right now, so this one was from last year. But you will, I will get rid of this one and I'll show you the new video. Uh, that uh, you're watching right now will be on YouTube and in this location. And I would encourage you to watch this more than once, maybe once at the beginning of the semester and once more a couple weeks in, just to make sure that everything makes sense. All right, so there's several folders you, hear, you see right here, and um, they're kind of sorted, I guess, by name right now. Um, let me start with the one that I want you to visit first. And this is this one, AEM 250 course information. You want to know what's going to be on the exam, what kind of topics? Well, watch this video about exam one, about exam two, about exam three, and the final exam. Each of those will tell you exactly what kind of things that I expect you to be able to do on each of the exams. I'll also send out an email to let you know uh, as well. You want some review of statics? Well, I have some statics examples here that you'll see. In fact, one of these three structures that you see here is often on your first exam in the course. I'll show you where that information is as well. All right, so that's what that is. Uh, AEM 250 Lecture Set 1 has all the different lectures for the class. Lecture Set 2 is just another copy it's not an exact copy, it's another time I've created the lectures for this class. You can watch the videos in here. They're also within the class. Um, either set is fine. However you want to watch the videos is fine. Whatever you find most convenient that works for you is good. Now the fourth edition is relatively new. For many years I used the third edition. A lot of the problems in the fourth edition are the exact same as the third edition. So what I've done is I've copied those over into the fourth edition folder. 
So if I click on this, you'll see chapter two. And so here is uh, problem 2.12-1 and so forth. Now these are sorted by name. And I want to point something out about this. Okay, so if I scroll down a little bit, and if I go all the way down on the page, there, here's 23 videos. There might be a day when there's more than 25. So you, you probably want to click on 50 or 250. Make sure you see all the videos. That's one thing I want to point out. The other thing I want to point out is when I sort these by name, it's, it's uh, sorted in a way that the computer thinks makes sense and not necessarily the way that we think it would make sense. So 2.2-4 comes in the book before problem 2.2-17, but you see everything here is the same, but this starts with a 1, and this starts with a 4, so it puts 2.2-17 in this list before 2.2-4. So if you want to see a problem, make sure that you look around enough to make sure that you haven't uh, scrolled by it already. And likewise, the way this is ordered, it thinks section 12 should come before section 2, because 12 starts with a 1, and section 2 starts with a 2. Okay, so uh, do be aware of that. Now if you click on these links, <clears throat> it's just like me right now, talking and working through the solution to a particular problem. And again, I will point out that if you want another problem worked, all you have to do is ask. I will make another solution video. Let's see if we can get back to the beginning here. So this is uh, the fourth edition worked out problems. I do have the third edition worked out problems. And if we were to look in one of these chapters, like chapter four, this particular problem, 4.5-7, is different than the fourth edition problem labeled 4.5-7 only in the numbers that's put into the problem. So these can also be very useful to you. They won't have the exact same answer at the end, but they will have the same process that needs to be used to solve the problem. Uh, so I want to keep those uh, alive in this video as well. Now, I want to point out that they have threatened to archive my older videos, so you might have to click this Show Archive Videos button, and I'm going to try to straighten them out on that, that even though I worked this problem six years ago, it's still a good solution. There's no need to, to make that difficult for you to access. Um, but I'll let you know if I find out more information about that. Right, so we have third edition, fourth edition problems, we have course information and the lecture sets. And this folder here, I just have this uh, as a case I need to use it for something, and there's nothing in it right now. All right, so that's all about the Panopto content. Um, it's separate from Blackboard, but it has this area in which we can put Panopto content into Blackboard. If you have a new problem that you want worked out, it'll be in the fourth edition worked out problems folder and I'll let you know by email. All right, so here's where you would go to access your ebook, the Red Shelf area. That says Access Granted Course Materials. Find your book here. So you would click on that. And we're not going to see anything uh, right now, I don't think. Well, it shows my book, but you may not be able to see this until the first day of the semester. Usually the book. Uh, the ebook is not available until the first day of the semester. So keep that in mind if you go looking for that. Let's see if I can get out of here. Okay. Um, the discussion board. This discussion board has a lot of useful information in it. One of your first assignments is to uh, talk about yourself a little bit, let everybody else know uh, what you're doing, where you're working, uh, where you're at in the country. Only provide the information that you're comfortable with, participate as uh, much as you want. And uh, this is just a suggestion, but that kind of gives a little camaraderie in the class, and it's always interesting to see where people are at uh, that take this distance education class. Here is instructions on how to opt out of the ebook. This is a picture 
okay but this will be what it would look like with the fourth edition and then down here it's kind of hard to see uh, in my opinion because it kind of blends in with everything else there's a button that says I want to opt out of the ebook and you would click that button and then you would opt out of the electronic version of the book there's a little note about Chegg we've talked about that already if you have a question make a post in this forum and say hey I'm having trouble with problem uh, 3.2-6 can you help me with that and then I will see that and I will check on that and then I will answer your question or you know what, whatever questions you might have suggestions and corrections sometimes there's a link that doesn't work uh, we saw that already let me know where the problem is and I'll try to fix that sometimes I make a mistake in a lecture and I, I try not to uh, but I'm not a hundred percent on everything I'm probably 99.8% uh, but there's going to be maybe a math error somewhere or I just say the wrong word sometimes if I'm thinking ahead um, that happens just let me know and I can fix that lecture or make a correction or an update this one's going to be important information on the course and the homework and the exams again about Chag and those places um, but uh, what I want you to see is um, so it's showing all the items about the exams this goes through and talks about what to expect generically on exams but if I go to the um, post here what should I expect to have to know for exam number one I will give a very detailed list of things that you need to know you need to be able to do these things find axial stress and strain on the bar from loads and temperature changes use this as a checklist throughout the semester once you have mastered all of these topics you should be in very good shape for your exam again here's how to opt out of the ebook uh, there's exam two and somewhere there's exam three there's the final exam uh, answers to odd numbered problems I may have to update that for the fourth edition I'll have to check on that um, there's homework handouts if you're not sure where to find those handouts that I have a, a couple times in the syllabus um, here's the required calculator okay, one of those two there's uh, about homework zero that's required and the importance again of working the recommended problems in addition to the required turned in homework there's some information about smarter proctoring and the exam instructions as well so I'll let you look at those so that's kind of the basic idea with this discussion board um, there's also a how-to forum and again how to opt out of the ebook and how to find uh, the recommended homework handouts those are a couple questions I get asked so if there's a good question that you ask me that I want to post in here I may post that for everybody else you know in uh, how to do some particular thing in the in the course All right so that's our discussion board I do encourage you to use that I know there are things very popular like group me and so forth that students like to set up uh, among themselves I will caution you against using group me you do not have any control over what gets posted to a group me discussion if somebody posts a test question that's a problem it's a problem for everybody not just the person that posted it so I would discourage the use of that sort of forum and use our own discussion board for our class in order to post questions that you might have in discussions there's how to schedule proctored exams I want to re-emphasize that the proctored exams in this class are live in-person proctoring where you will go to a place um, a testing center a library places that are part of the smarter proctoring network can host you to take a test okay. uh, proctoring questions are dealt with by the College of Continuing Studies they will be in contact before your first test to make sure that you're set up and everything but I would encourage you to identify a local proctor or a local library someplace that could serve as your proctoring uh, proctored exam location 
Submitting homework is done through this area right here. Okay. So if I click on, um, we'll look at homework zero in a moment. If I click on this, it's not completely clear how to submit homework. If you click on this uh, PDF file, this is your homework assignment. Okay, it downloaded this as a PDF. Uh, write your name, print your name. I want to see your signature. Write an explanation of why you shouldn't use Chegg. Uh, it could be a violation of the academic, academic misconduct. And here's some questions. Uh, what's the definition of a free body diagram? Work some problem or so forth. So this will be the basis of your turned in homework. Now how you turn it in is you click on this link right here. It's worth 35 points. It's going to be due August 29th by midnight, 11.59 p.m. And you take your PDF file and you just drag it right here. And that's how you and click on submit. And that's how you submit your homework. And so each of these have different dates associated with them. They're on that course schedule that I showed you, but you can also find the dates by clicking on the course calendar. And um, let's see where that, uh, here it is down here. Here's the course calendar. You can bring that up and it'll show you where the, um, what the dates are for this particular class. And maybe your other classes too, I'm not sure. Now, to make a PDF file, there are different ways to do that. You may be familiar with using your phone to turn a photograph into a PDF. You can use that. Um, at home, I have a multifunction scanner, and it has uh, the ability to scan and print, and they're not very expensive. They're around $100, so it's a you know auto sheet-fed flat scanner, and, and it works great. It creates a PDF file, and then I can do whatever I need to do with it. So I would encourage you to think about getting one of those if that is within your budget. Now let's talk about homework zero. That's kind of a uh, particular one. And this goes through and it kind of lists uh, the things that you need to know and understand and I need to know that you know and understand about our course. So I'm going to have you read it and print your name and, and write your name on this so I can see your signature. I want you to scan this just like you would do uh, with your homework so that um, you have practice with that process of making a PDF file. But this has things like, I understand this is an internet delivered course with pre-recorded lectures, but that exams will be held by the use of a live proctor in a proctoring location set up through the use of smartering proctoring, smarter proctoring. This means you will travel to a proctoring location for each exam, uh, which are three semester exams and a final exam. Understand how to view the lecture videos in Blackboard and Panopto. I have read the course syllabus and the course policies and so forth. And I'll let you read through that and uh, I'll update this link, but this link will show this video and your signature indicates that you understand these different things. Okay, the big one that I get is, uh, oh, I thought I could use a web proctor. Uh, well, no, I want you to go to a live proctor. All right, so that's where you submit the homework. And if we go to our ho course homepage, then um, we get into our introduction module. Uh, the introduction module is just kind of an uh, overview with some objectives down here at the bottom. I think it asks you to uh, visit the help wanted area just so you know where that is and visit the introduction discussion so that you know where that is. The real material starts in module one, introduction to stress, strain, and design. This is a neat picture. This is a test that I conducted. Uh, for a tension test of temp, uh, steel at an elevated temperature. The steel is so hot, this is an induction coil that you see here, the steel is so hot that it's glowing this cherry red color. Okay. Um, so if you scroll down just a little bit, it shows the readings. Here is a, a link to the video over this lecture topic. You can access it here or you can access it in the Panopto video area. 
In addition to that, I have lecture notes for each of these lectures. So if you don't want to take notes or if you want to print these out and make your own notes on top of these, you can do that. So let's download one of these. Okay, so this is uh, my handwriting and it goes through and this is the what you'll see on the screen during those lectures. So for each of these lectures I have saved this information for your use and benefit in this course. In addition to that, some lectures have additional demos. So we talk about attention test and then if I click on that that gives me a little video on uh, how to do uh, what, what goes on during attention test. So I'll mute that right now and uh, so there I am picking up a uh, tinsel specimen and talking about that and uh, for different topics I've made some similar videos uh, like this. Alright, so after Module 1, then you'll have a test, and then you'll go to Module 2. You click on this link, or you go over here and click on Module 2, and pretty much you'll do that for the entire semester. So this was another materials test that I did. It was a ballistics test. I shot a cylinder out of a gun at the university, and it hit a steel target in the uh, cylinder deformed and here I'm using a coordinate measuring machine to take a look at the new shape of the projectile the cylinder so I can determine the material behavior for permanent deformation um, and then uh, you see module 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 uh, so that is pretty much it now you'll see some emails from me I'll try to send out an introduction email right uh, right away after I make this video right now this is uh, in June of 2022 um, but I'll send it out before the semester starts I'll probably send an introduction email out a couple times right near the same one a couple times right near the beginning of the semester in case there's any uh, late additions to the class well, I hope you have a good semester I do want to add that Mechanics and Materials is a class that I really like to teach. I'm very passionate about this material. Um, mechanics and Materials, in my opinion, is, is the first engineering class where you can make a living doing Mechanics and Materials. You can't really make a living doing statics, not statics by itself. But you can make a living if you understand Mechanics and Materials, how stresses and strains are in a structure. Um, we'll understand why things are designed the way they are, why nature does things the way they are, like a, why is a tree branch shaped the way that it is, things like that. When we talk about bending. Um, and so uh, there's lots of interesting, very practical applications of mechanics and materials. So I hope you enjoy the class as much as I enjoy teaching it. Please do reach out to me, email, phone call, uh, what have you if you have any questions or comments about the class.